Welcome to the Prison Professors Program. I'm really enthusiastic about this opportunity to introduce you to my friend, Imad Zuberi. I won't only call him my friend. He's also a mentor to me. I've learned a great deal about him with regard to starting businesses and raising capital. He is the author of The Entrepreneurial Mindset, and he wrote this book specifically to help people in jail and prison and to help people who are coming back from the military service and recalibrating in society. And I'm just so grateful to him for taking the time to do all of this work. But before we get into his extraordinarily successful life and what advice he has to give, I'd like him to tell us a little bit about where he's from and what brought him to this, uh, this stage in his career. So Ahmad, could you do that for us? Could you tell, help our sure. audience understand your background? Sure, sure. My parents are originally from Asia. I grew up in upstate New York and I moved to California to go to college and I've stayed here ever since. Um, since then I've been working after graduation in financial services, either insurance companies, investment uh, division or venture capital or real, real estate investments. So quite an impressive background, certainly different from most of the people who will be watching this. You know, as I, you and I have spoken, when I invited you to participate in this program, most of our audience are people that are living inside of jails and prisons across America. And our goal is to help those people understand how they can overcome some of the challenges. And we spoke, when you and I spoke about the entrepreneurial mindset, you told me that it was some of the you had to overcome a lot of challenges in your life and, and we're all effectively living through struggles and challenges. And the key is really to figure out how do we recalibrate and make things happen. Could you do us the favor of kind of help us understand what do you mean by the entrepreneurial mindset? What is that? Um, basically thinking how you can start a business or how you can be your own boss, um, thinking and uh, uh, trying to raise money to start your uh, own small store or, you know, delivery company or uh, laundry mat or whatever, um, you know, how you should be thinking about doing your own business as opposed to working for somebody else. And you know, Ahmad, that's so important, not only for people in jail, in prison or returning citizens, but just so many people because society has changed with this pandemic. There are many people, millions of people that have lost their jobs and they need to recalibrate and they need to develop the tools that we're going to make available through our course here in the entrepreneurial mindset. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit about emphasizing the importance of how you got there because you take, you do a really good job of helping us understand the investment that you made in yourself before you started this uh, really impressive career of raising capital and building big bas businesses. What could, in what ways does a person's commitment to just even going through the GED course and learning basic reading and writing and math skills, in what way does that put them on the pathway to further opportunities? Well, obviously, you know, you should uh, have the basics, as you said, GED or, or anything along those lines. If you don't have the basics, you don't get, you know, the next level up. Um, but coming back to people in jails and prisons and, and in military, um, often it's hard for them to get a job because, you know, everywhere they, the, if you're from military, you don't have experience other than, say, if you were in naval a nuclear submarine. I mean, what experience can you, you know, uh, parlay over to uh, a normal civilian life? Or if you're in jail, uh, you put in felon, a lot of companies would not want to hire you. So starting your own business would be a good way for um, uh, both uh, segments of the population who are coming into civilian life. And you wrote about when you were learning these skill sets and you, you, you emphasized focus on the basics first, because we want to get people who are in there right now, living in struggle right now, advancing in preparation for when they come home to start a business. Too many people in that environment, Imad, uh, they, a lot of times they say, well, I'll start working on that when I get out. But there are things that they can do today, like like you described in your book, and that's just learning how to put words into sentences and sentences into paragraphs, because isn't that, what relationship does that ability to communicate 
have to being able to raise the capital that will lead to a new business. Absolutely. Communication and ability to communicate is more important than IQ, like EQ uh, is, you know, emotional intelligence. If you know how to communicate, you have emotional intelligence. That's how you can go to an investor, whether it be your grandparents or your sisters or brothers or bank. Uh, If you can't communicate and if you don't have good emotional intelligence, you can't get money. I mean, even if you're selling, if you're doing, for example, a small business, if you don't have good communication skills, you won't be able to market and sell whatever you're trying to sell, whether it's product or service. So communication skills are important. Communication skills is one part of the equation. Another part of the equation might be critical thinking skills. And that is trying to understand markets, perhaps. Maybe what is the right opportunity that I can do? Because every decision we make, my understanding is having learned from the entrepreneurial mindset, every decision we make has comes with a cost, an opportunity cost. Either it's going to lead us closer to what we want to become or it's going to take us a little far, farther away from what we want to become. So it becomes really important to define that success and then work toward it. But another component, Ahmad, and I want you to speak to this as well, is just arithmetic and math. Because you kind of in business, we have to be able to communicate in numbers. And, and could you sure. tell us the relationship to um, building a business plan? What does the relationship to math skills have to do with uh, 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 building a business plan? Sure, of course, you know, arithmetic or math um, is important in any business because one way or the other, you have to do accounting. You know what you sold, what you bought. Uh, if, say, you're in, in uh, business that's selling actual, you know, uh, merchandise, uh, you know, tangible merchandise, then you have to use uh, math of what you bought, for example, you know, your inventory, what you sold it. Um, and what your profit is and so forth. Um, Even in services, you have to hire other people to do subcontracting or other pieces of parts of the work that your service that you're providing. So arithmetic is important, but you know, those are, those are two of the most important things you just pinpointed communication and math, Um, basic math. Yeah. And you don't have to be you don't have to wait until you come home to start developing those skills. Even if you're locked in a jail cell or locked in a prison cell, or if you've got time by yourself, you can pick up a GED book and, and not only say, oh, I've got my GED, but truly master that. I, one of the lessons that we like to teach, and, and I think I learned this from you, is, is you, you, know, you ask a person, and I'm going to do the same exercise you use with me so, so that people can kind of get it. Uh, Imad, what's seven plus three? Uh, 10. See how quickly he answered that. And that was the question that he asked me. How quickly do I answer? Seven plus three is 10. But if I go through one of those algebraic equations or word problems that are in the back of that GED book, I probably can't answer it that quickly. But it's Correct. something I can spend my time doing while I'm in jail is to be able to answer all of those more difficult word problems and algebraic equations than, and if I could answer those as easy as, as easily as I can answer seven plus three, I really empower myself and make myself a better candidate uh, for employment. People, correct. And people should take advantage. If they're in incarcerated, if they're in prison, they should take that time that they have available now, uh, get basics. I mean, it, you're there anyway, might as well just make use of it as opposed to coming out um, when you come out, you have a lot of other distractions. When you're inside, um, you have no distractions. So getting, you know, basic books, I don't know how easy or difficult it is for people to get books, um, you know, accounting for dummies or basic accounting one-on-one. If you know math, it's very easy to do. It's not, it's not rocket science. Well, they don't have to get all of that. They can get the, the entrepreneurial mindset and learn a great deal right here and really practical advice but it, before somebody can go on to build, and we'll talk about this in future videos because you promised mm-hmm. to do that with us, but before somebody can go on to build a real estate empire or a, uh, a, a venture capital firm or um, a consulting business, they really have to have those levels of basics so they can start um, you know, advancing in incremental stages. 
Correct. Well, if you can't crawl, you can't walk. If you can't walk, you can't run. So you have to start from basics. Absolutely. One of the, th- one of the lessons that I really admired from you, Imad, is that the commitment that you've always made to helping people in struggle and challenge uh, become more successful. In fact, your book is really the result of an effort you wanted to make to help people overcome struggle. And all of that started when you were an undergraduate student at the University of Southern California. Can you tell us about or expand a little bit about some of the mentoring and the tutoring that you used to do when you were in college? Sure. Um, At USC, um, we did a lot of uh, mentoring in local high schools. USC is located in South Central, which is uh, for lack of a better word, um, not very socioeconomically uh, vibrant uh, area. So a lot of, whereas the students at USC are coming from, you know, wealthy families, the surrounding around USC is not from a very, you know, educated, economically well-to-do uh, family. So what we did is we created a program called Career Advantage Program, CAP. CAP, basically what it did, it it went out to local high schools and encouraged minority kids, uh, specifically African-Americans, to stay in school and to apply for college and try to go into school, uh, college, whether it be a four-year college or a community college, two-year junior college. um, That's how they, you know, improve their self, improve themselves uh, economically. Uh, I think the program started with like five uh, students when I was in student Senate. Now I think it's about 1500 um, USC students out of 32,000 who are teaching in local colleges. So it's quite an, impre- high schools. Quite an impressive contribution of, of, of striving to help people who want to help themselves because Obviously, nobody can change the direction of somebody else's life, but we can give them the tools of the entrepreneurial mindset so that people can learn what worked for you. And if you'd be so kind as to stick around for us, stick around with us for a second video that will follow this one in the next video, what I'd really like to talk about is the trajectory of your career after you left USC and how you took all of those lessons of having a self-directed mindset of of saying, I'm going to create my own opportunities, how that kind of matured after you graduated college. Could you stick around with us for a second interview? Sure. Excellent. 